welcome to this OzMed lecture on wound management as it relates to sport. I'm Associate Professor Jeff Sussman. So why bother to dress a wound in a sporting context? Well, we need to create an environment that will allow the thing to heal. We need to protect the surrounding tissue. We want to reduce pain and we want to maintain temperature to keep things good. We want to control or prevent hemorrhage because let's face it, bleeding is an issue. We want to prevent uh, odour. We want to contain drainage. We want to apply compression if we need it for to stop the bleeding. We need to decrease the stress for the person themselves and we want to prevent a managed infection. Now I'm going to be showing multiple images and examples of dressings in this lecture. What does a wound need? Well a wound needs energy. Energy comes in the form of nutrition, protein, vitamin C, good nutrition. We want to keep the good things in and the bad things out. Now, anyone involved with sport knows about the blood rule. The blood rule is to minimize the spread of blood-borne diseases, which means when someone bleeds, they have to be taken from the field immediately and they need, in fact, to have that bleeding stopped. What is a current practice is they use rectinol ointment. Now, this has worried me for a long time. In fact, I wrote a paper on this and I called it hemorrhage, not hemorrhoids. Because in fact, rectinol is something you use for hemorrhoids. It's a vasoconstrictor. It stops blood flow. You don't want to stop blood flow. You want to stop bleeding. And there's a big difference between the two. What we will use is a hemostatic alginate. This is something that will stop the bleeding very quickly, whether it's a nosebleed or a bleed from another part of the body. You put a calcium alginate on it. This will, in fact, immediately help to cause hemostasis and a clot will form and the bleeding will stop. And these are a couple of the examples of the sort of products that will be uh, hemostatic calcium alginates. Not all calcium alginates are hemostatic. These ones are. And instead of shoving gauze up someone's nose when it's bleeding with some adrenaline, you can just put this ribbon form of the calcium alginate in, leave it there for maybe half an hour, carefully remove it, and it's done its job. Sporting injuries. It doesn't matter what sport you play, both from contact and non-contact sports, people get injured. Uh, I'm a pennant lawn bowler, and you'd be amazed how many patients I have to treat that get injured playing lawn bowls. It happens. Now, these can be minor. It can be a blister. It can be a cramp. It can be a little abrasion, laceration. Not very exciting, but they're still important. Or it can be tissue injuries, muscle, ligament, tend, fascia injuries. And it will depend on what type it is as to what you'll see. Sometimes pain, sometimes swelling, sometimes reduced movement, sometimes tenderness. If there are broken bones, certainly you'll get uh, swelling, tenderness, sometimes loss of sensation, even numbness. Certainly with a broken nose, you'll get bleeding, pain, you'll get deformity. And with blisters, you'll see this localized blister on the body itself. What we've used for a long time in sports medicine, I'm a member of Sports Medicine Australia, is RISA, rest, ice, compression, elevation, and referral. So how does this work? Well, rest. You've got to stop playing. There's no point keep going when you're injured because all you're going to do is make it worse. So you have to take the player off, lay them down somewhere comfortable. So this not loss of movement is going to help to actively decrease the blood flow because if you don't do that, you're going to increase the bleeding and the ultimate damage. Then ice. You never put ice directly on the skin. Wrap it in a towel, wrap it in something, apply it around the injured area for 20 minutes maximum, take it off, and then apply it for another 20 minutes after two hours. So you do that for about the first two days. But be very careful when using ice. Remember, ice is cold and it will cause some circulatory problems. So be careful. You can also use cold packs. That's an alternative to ice that you can use in this place. But I also put the compression over the cold pack or the ice. You might say, why? Well, the compression also increases this reduction of blood flow and therefore slows down the bleeding and helps to regain hemostasis quickly. Then when you take it off, it looks not bad at all. And then you then reapply the compression bandaging. 
Compression. Why do we apply compression? Because what the compression does, it reduces the bleeding and the swelling and gives you support for the injured uh, joint as well. That's important. We elevate. Again, by elevating, that reduces the blood flow. And then in most injury cases, we probably should let them be seen by a physio or if necessary, a sports medicine doctor, depending on the level of injury that you get. Of course, as well as rice, there is harm. What you don't want to cause is harm. And some of the things that will cause harm, particularly in the first 72 hours, is heat. Do not apply heat. Do not uh, vigorously apply heat for, for hot water bottles, hot packs, liniments, wrong. Alcohol. I'm sorry, guys. After the game, instead of drinking a couple of beers, you shouldn't be drinking any alcohol. Alcohol will actually make things worse. A couple of days later, not so bad. But not when you immediately injured. Running, I've heard a lot of athletes say, I'm gonna run it out. No, in that first 72 hours, you shouldn't be running. This will increase the risk of bleeding, increase the risk of hematoma. And if you get this clot below the surface, this could become infected, then you've got a bigger problem. And massage, do not massage in that first 72 hours. It increase the bleeding, you increase the swelling. Once things have calmed down, then you can think about massage. People have often asked me about diabetes in sport. And a lot of people have said, there's a myth that people with diabetes can't play sport. Nothing is further from the truth. In fact, the Diabetes Association encourages physical exercise. They've got a program called uh, Lift for Life. Very important. Just because you don't have diabetes don't mean that you cannot compete, even in quite vigorous sports. In fact, Steve Redgrave, very famous English rower, won five gold medals with type 2 diabetes. How about that? I think that's amazing. There are many league footballers with diabetes who are playing. This is a vigorous sport, but there's no reason why you can't do. Again, more physically vigorous sports, you've got to monitor the patient's blood sugar, and that's important. That's why teams have doctors. They're there to make sure that any diabetic is properly monitored. Also to make sure they replace the sugar with them. And if you're going to be using uh, replacement drinks, make sure you use the ones that are low in sugar or no sugar. Because I can tell you that some of those replacement drinks have 20 or 30 grams of sugar in one bottle. So be careful. But it's important to know that diabetes children, everyone, should be doing exercise, and this is a good thing. Again, how does diabetes affect wound healing? Well, diabetes does affect wound healing because of reduced blood flow in some diabetics, because of the damage to nerves. And the problem is if you've lost the feeling in your boots and it's too tight, it can then rub and cause a little injury. So be aware. That's why any diabetic should be working with a podiatrist to make sure their footwear is well-fitting and appropriate for them. Again, remember that uh, loss of feeling is a risk factor. And a diabetic has five times the risk of an infection to a non-diabetic, and that's also important. And this lack of feeling that I've already talked about is very, very critical. With diabetes, major foot problems are one of the big problems. So that's why they need to look at their feet every day wash them carefully, dry them carefully, use a mirror to look at the bottom of their feet and any minor sign whatsoever, get some treatment. Don't just ignore it. Drugs used in sporting injuries. Look, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs have now become so common because codeine has been rescheduled and is prescription only. The problem is that some of these non steroidals can affect muscle and ligament and tendons. So you have to be careful that if you're going to use non steroidals use them for short periods, two days, three days, but don't use them for weeks and months at a time. Remember also, non steroidal drugs have the same effect on platelets as aspirin. So they have a problem with clotting. So be aware of them when you're using them. Again, these are some of the most widely used drugs and we want to be careful with the way we use them. Many of them are topical. Great. 
I much prefer people to use topical insights than using oral ones because they work just as well, but the side effect profile is much, much lower if you're going to use them topically. So go for the topical ones, preferably. And no problems at all with using the topical ones. And there's good studies that show in randomized controlled trials that topical works just as well as oral forms. Paracetamol. If, you get, if you've got pain, I think the safest thing to use is paracetamol. Paracetamol is a good drug which you can use. You take, in the case of an adult, two gram, four times a day, do the job. Don't take one dose. It's important with pain to keep pain levels under control. So that's good uh, drug levels in the body. So take them four times a day. You'll maintain the levels well. The newer, the COX-2s, these are the ones that are more likely to cause the side effects. So be careful if you're going to use them. If you're going to use them, short-term use only. And again, aspirin, all of these inhibit responses to a number of things in the body. So be careful. And here are some of the evidence of the damage they do. Some of them will increase the local ischemia. Some of them uh, reduce the possibility of scar formation. Uh, some of them reduce ligament repair. And that's something you don't want for a sportsman. Some of them delay re or healing of the wound. Not a good thing. So use them with caution. You really should do. Now, glucosamine. Glucosamine, look, there are many that say it's wonderful. There are many that say it's not wonderful. There is some evidence that the use of glucosamine will reduce the loss of space in joints, particularly the knee. So look, that's up to you. Talk to your doctor before you use it. According to your injections, they're commonly used, unfortunately, for tendon injuries, and they might have a reduction of pain, but they do not promote tendon healing. So again, use them with caution. Again, studies have clearly shown that excessive use of many of these drugs can have negative long-term effects. And that's something we want to avoid. Again, a single corticosteroid injection may be valuable, but certainly we don't want that to go on. Again, when actual tendon healing is critical, particularly things like Achilles, again, you don't want that problem. The ciprofloxacin, this is an antibiotic which we use for certain infections, but this and the group of what we call fluoroquinolones inhibit uh, tendon. So really, you should never use them on children and be very careful on older people and use them very short term. Obviously, if you've got a pseudomonas infection and you need to use them, fine, but use them very short term and never with children and with great caution with older people. So let's look at the actual issue of wound care in sport. The biggest problem is someone gets injured during a game, you have to whip them off, do something, get them back on the field. And that's a problem. And of course, when they're sweating, getting anything to stick is going to be a problem. Well, you can use the little um, skin wipes, the little uh, isopropyl alcohol ones, and you can also use the polymer films. This will make things stick a little bit better. So, how do you hold things on? Well, cohesive bandages. The beauty of your cohesive bandages, it sticks to itself. It'll give you your 25 millimeters of compression. It'll give you the support that will stay in place. And that makes it a lot easier for you. So let's have a look at looking at treatment during a game and looking at treatment after the game. So someone gets cut and it happens. Get them off, wash it, remove any foreign material, stop the bleeding, maybe pressure, maybe your hemostatic alginate, put a simple dressing on and put your cohesive bandage on, get them back on the field. After the game, give them a good cleanse, a good surfactant, apply an antiseptic. Why an antiseptic? Because they've been on the ground, the risk of bugs on the dirt is much higher. Leave it on for three or four minutes, wash it off. If there is a cut that's open, close it with some stary strips and then put a island film dressing and again, your cohesive bandage. Change it in two or three days' time and see how you whether you need to reapply a dressing at that stage. A graze. That's something worse. You've got over, particularly we get this in hockey on the uh, artificial turf areas. You get them, say, if you're playing tennis on, on onto car, you get them there. And a graze is where you've got contaminated material in the wound itself. 
get them off, give it a wash, put a dressing on, cohesive bandage, get them back on the field. After the game, scrub it with a good surfactant. Get rid of every last little bit of crud and dirt and whatever is there. Put your antiseptic on, leave it on for three or four minutes, wash it off. And then depending on how wet it is, you might use an island film still, you might use a thin hydrocolloid, or probably better, a foam. Because the foam has a lot more absorbency. And then apply either a tubi grip type tubular bandage or use your cohesive bandage as well. Friction burn. And as I say, we get that in hockey, we get that in a number of things. Bring them off, just wash the area with a bit of coldness, cover with a simple film dressing, put a cohesive on, back on the field. When they come off, again, cold running water for about 10 or 15 minutes. Again, either apply, I like hydrogels. The hydrogels are cooling, the either amorphous hydrogels with a foam or the sheet hydrogels, beautiful for that. And then your cohesive bandage. And a blister. Someone comes off, they say, oh, my, my, my boots are hurting me. You take them off and there's a blister. You can't do much. I would put just a little bit of hydrogel or just some foam on for the moment and then get them back out. Afterwards, number one, check the footwear. Send it to the podiatrist. If necessary, they might need orthotics or you need to change the footwear completely to solve what's causing the blister. F folliculitis. This is a localized infection of the hair follicles. And it's quite common in young men. Unfortunately, young men tend to have a lot more bugs on their skin than women. So what we do for folliculitis is give them a good scrub using the surgical scrub, the better in surgical scrub, and that will help to lower the bugs and get rid of them. Uh, try not to wear tight clothing and uh, just putting a little betadine on each of the little spots is very useful as well. Tinea. Tinea is very common in footwear. Why? Moist, damp area that there's warm and the, the fungus loves to grow there. So you need to look at the feet regularly. If necessary, dust some antifungal powder into your socks before you uh, are competing. If you've got a problem, then go to the pharmacy. You can get some simple over-the-counter products that do the job very well. Again, adhesives. I don't like to use some adhesives. There are some adhesives that we use for, say, holding dressings on are the skin-friendly tapes like these ones. Of course, for sporting uh, injuries, you need to use rigid tape. So we use the rigid tapes around ankles, round wrists, round shoulders. We use it as much for prevention as for treatment as well. So choose your, 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 your bandage carefully. Sometimes we use an elastic one for uh, joints that are moving. You need one that's elastic. Rigid are there to hold things in place, particularly with a shoulder, with an ankle before a match and then after a match. I've given you some good websites that you can follow. I've given you some good examples of some books that you can also read and some good journals that are available that you can also read. Uh, I'll talk more about in another lecture about infection. And remember, wounds, whether in sport or other, is a team sport. And when you're working together in a team, communicate. Thank you.